It's been a month since Olivia and I started dating. It's surprisingly gone... well. I guess more on that to come. I've met Olivia's two kids. Madison, who's six, is Penny's age. So we arranged a play date for them, and they got along like a house on fire. Penny wants to go to the same school as Madison. We're just trying to arrange that at the moment. As for Olivia's other son, Jacob, he tends to live with his dad more than he lives with Olivia. Jacob is quick-witted and very smart. This kid behaves. Yesterday morning, he woke me up early to ask me if I liked Doctor Who. Being the liar that I am, I said I did. I then spent an hour being quizzed on things I lied about. Not nice. It was a horror show. He's a good kid, Jacob. As I said, he's smart. Jacob likes to write funny stories, which he puts into little skits. Not a surprise, because his dad writes for late-night television, so I guess it makes sense that he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. As for Olivia and I, things are getting tense. Olivia is concerned about something. I keep catching her about to talk to me, and when she opens her mouth, nothing comes out. She just walks away. Olivia walks in, holding her cell phone. Jacob wants you to watch more Doctor Who episodes. You know, if you think you can get away with fibbing to him again. I knew he knew. Who compares Doctor Who to the shield and gets away with it? Dumb people. Hang on. You must be dumb. I laugh. There's a beat of silence. I've been meaning to talk to you. I've sensed that. What do you want to talk about? How awesome I am? Olivia sits down on the couch. She puts the phone on the coffee table. No, and I'd never say anything like that to your face, jerk. Well, you've just lost sex. I hope you're happy with yourself. I want to know where you disappear to. Oh, no. Do I turn into a ghost when I'm asleep? Stop joking around. I'm serious here. Okay. What do you mean, where I disappear to? Make it a little clearer. Sometimes when we talk, I feel like you disappear out of conversations. It's like you're thinking of something else. I'm like a woman. I get urges for chocolate. I have a secret stash at home which my penny will never find. I do an evil laugh. Okay, weird. But what do you think about? I don't think about anyone. Harrison, I see it and hear it in the silences. Um... I'm silent because your mouth is like the Duracell bunny. Translation? You talk non-stop. It's like talking is a sport to you. I never want to encourage you, hence my silence. I'm sorry. You still disappear, Harrison. Am I disappearing now, or are we talking? Don't get smart. You know what I mean. Actually, no, I don't. There's no talking to you sometimes. That's funny. What did we just do? You're a dick. I need to change into my pajamas before bed. Excuse me. Olivia gets up and leaves. Her phone is on the table. After a beat, I pick it up. It's unlocked. I go through her messages. Olivia suddenly walks in. What the fuck are you doing? I'm caught red-handed. I throw Olivia's phone away and raise my hands in the air. Olivia stands, looking irate. I'm panicking. Well, answer me. I needed a flashlight. For what? And your phone's right next to you. Fine. I needed to calculate something. Okay, so if I look at my phone, will there be a calculator app open? Ugh, fine. So there's a what's up message on your phone, so I... So you snooped on me. Um, I think that's a bit obvious. Damn, I'm not helping myself here. Why were you snooping on me? I only looked at it for a second. Why? What's curious about my messages? Nothing in particular. See, why don't I believe that? Look, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Do you trust me? Yes, I trust you. Actually, look me in the eye while saying that. I trust you. I don't believe you, and the more I think about it, the more I'm sure the reason you're quiet more often than not is that you're insecure. About what? You're clutching at a straw. You're insecure because you're not sure how dissimilar I am to your ex, Jess. You're way off base. Okay, then the real reason must be that you're a control freak who checks up on a person despite that someone doing nothing wrong. Again, way off base. Then tell me why you were snooping on me, because I'll let you know now. 
I'm close to ending things with you. I'm real close. Overreact much? Get out. Get out of my house right now. Come on, Olivia, we can sort this out. Yes, we can when you're mature enough to want to tell me the truth. Until then, you're dumped. Get the fuck out. I stand up. What about Penny? We can't wake her. Penny's asleep. I'll drop her off in the morning after breakfast. If we can work this out. Well, that's really up to you. I've made my position clear. Now fuck off. I grab my jacket and walk out. I'm in the cafe across from the library where Olivia works. Olivia's meeting me here to hand over Penny. Gwen, the bored teenager, who works in the library, walks over. You've got a lot of explaining to do, mister. It better be good. I like your hair. I don't think it's too pink. Whoever told you I said that is lying to your face. Block them. We're not talking about my hair. And even if we were, this chick is hot. And you're a blind mole, so zip it up and shut it. What are you talking about, Gwen? I'm talking about Olivia. She's been in a bad mood all day at work. She keeps telling me what to do. She's your boss. You're her employee. I'm not following why you're concerned. I'm concerned because usually I'm just ignored by her. And she allows me to do anything I want, but... But she's acting like Putin? Yeah, she's not leaving me alone. And I know it has a thing to do with you. And why me? You're her boyfriend. And men are always at fault for everything. What did you do? I... looked through her phone while Olivia changed her clothes and she caught me. Why did you do it? It was just there. There wasn't any malice intended. Do you trust her? Yes. That didn't convince me. Let me try again. Do you trust your girlfriend? Yes. Trust Olivia. More than your ex, Jess? We're not discussing this further. I'm not convinced you trust Olivia, but I think I know how to fix this. How? And what's in it for you? Peaceful life. Anyway... You're not going to like my plan. I don't care. I just need to fix this. Put Olivia in a situation where you might not trust her and... And when I suggest it and she does it, it comes across like I trusted her all along, and then she's the fool, not me. Um, firstly, women are more clever than men. Secondly, that's why I came up with the brilliant plan, and you didn't. I agree with you. Will Olivia take me back if the plan works? Gwen nods her head. It's genius. Thank you. I have an idea. Go to a male strip club. I'll pay. Are you sure about that? Men in those clubs tend to be pretty hot. Yeah, I'm sure. I trust her. Okay, if you're sure. But you need to know how to trust her because faking it won't work for long. It's plaster. You need stitches, not plasters. Good luck. Gwen stands up and exits. I walk into the library as Olivia is working. I don't want to talk to you. I just came to say thanks for dropping Penny. She's back at her mom's. Penny said she had the best time with Madison. I'm glad. Can you leave now? I also came in to say, I trust you. Gwen walks over. The shelves are cleared. I'm about to put the boring new books on the shelves. I don't need the commentary, Gwen. Didn't you hear what I just said? I trust you. Prove it. Ow. I know. Pay for Olivia and me to go to a male strip joint. I'd pay for that. 
you'd allow me to go to a club to be danced on by strangers. Yep. Because I trust you. Why do I think there is a game afoot here? There isn't one. Just do this for me. You want me to do you a favor? I'm hell to the nah. No, there's more chance of me kissing Trump than there is of me doing you a favor. Now scram. Get out. Vamos. I'd allow you to do anything you like. I don't need you to allow me to do anything. So I do whatever the fuck I want. Just let him prove he trusts you. Ugh. Fine. I want three dances from men I pick. And if I decide to take one home, you'll have yourself to blame. Have you got that? You'll have a great time. I promise. We're gonna need a grand in cash. What? You said you were paying. Fine. I'll be back in a half an hour. I walk out of the cafe. I take out my phone and make a call. Hey, P. I need a huge favor from you. Olivia and Gwen are sat down in the strip joint. We've got about a grand in cash, but look miserable. This night is going well. What? It's a disaster. It's a strip joint, and none of the men here is willing to dance for us to get naked. To be fair to the guy before, he did strip his shirt off. I don't care about the shirt. I came to see dudes with their Johnsons out, not bare chests. Not that I'm complaining, I just expect more. Let's call it a day. Sizable looking guy laughs, catches Olivia's attention. Wait, who's that guy? Where? The kingpin looking guy in the corner. Babe, I don't see anyone. I think I know him. Look, we've got to be up early for work tomorrow. We should head off. Stop changing the subject. Where do I know him from? I should ask him. Olivia gets up and looks to exit. Gwen grabs her arm to stop her. No, wait. Olivia stops walking. She sees something on Gwen's face. What? What's with the look? Let's make out. What are you hiding from me, Gwen? Ugh, fine. The Kingpin is a friend of Harrison's. He owns the club. Apparently they're old school friends. What? Harrison paid KP to look after us tonight, and KP told the guys in the club that no one was supposed to show you their magic wands. And let me guess why Harrison did all this. Because he doesn't trust me? That's what I think too. I did warn him. How do you know all of this? He paid me to be your date tonight. Basically, I meant to write a report so he's sure nothing happened. I can't believe that man. You know what? I am not letting him get away with it. Harrison will pay for what he's done. Please don't do it, Olivia. Just allow him to think he's gotten away with it. Why would I do that? So later, when you're in an argument, you can use the situation as an example to win that fight. That's what I would do. Olivia mulls the idea over. Then her face lights up. I have a better idea but I'm going to need your help and the Kingpin's help. Whatever you think, it's not worth it. You're risking your relationship. I don't care. Harrison's paying for this. Well, it's your funeral. Excuse me, don't go away. Olivia stands up and heads to the Kingpin guy. I'm sitting on the couch reading a book. This night is going perfectly. When I suggested the strip joint as an activity to get Olivia to trust me, I didn't for the life of me think it was going to go so well. I thought it would fail. But I guess KP and Gwen are doing a great job on this mission. The last text I got from Gwen said that it was going swimmingly. And that's why I think I'm the king of the world. Seriously, I need to be feted by the UN or something. I'm great. 
There's no doubt about it. I am. I thought Olivia would figure it out by now. At least I thought Gwen would have crumbled too, but sadly for them, it hasn't transpired. I'm the king of the world, baby. Am I'm cocky today. Anyway, my point is, Olivia is none the wiser to our plan. I'm on my way to winning a Boyfriend of the Year award. I've also got to say KP. My college friend is a good guy for helping me put this plan together. He's a true G. Yep, I never said that before. I kind of want to say it more now that I think about it. I'm a true G. Yeah, that's starting to sound lame. I just have to wait until tomorrow when I'll walk into Olivia's library with the knowledge that Olivia knows I trusted her. That's a master plan if there ever was one. I get three what's up messages with pictures on my phone. One shows a man kissing Olivia's neck. What the fuck? Another shows Olivia touching a, a man's G-string. Okay, she's so dumped. And the last one shows Olivia leaving with said man. A message from Gwen reads, I tried to stop her, man. I'm sorry. I sit there devastated. I'm heartbroken. I can't believe what I've just seen. First, Olivia wanted me to trust her, and then she went on to cheat on me. What kind of person does that? You know what? She's just like Jess. They're two people with the same blood. I wouldn't even be surprised if they were related. Damn! I loved Olivia. Uh, if I'd have just told her the truth about why I didn't trust her, maybe... Maybe what? It's over. Move on with your life. Doorbell rings. It must be Gwen. I said I'd pay for her helping me tonight. I answer the door, and standing is not Gwen, but Olivia. What the fuck? Olivia walks into my studio apartment. Get out. I don't want to talk to you. And why is that? Don't play dumb with me. Am I dumb? You got Gwen to take me to a strip joint, which your pal owned? Damn it, KP. You then paid that pal money so he makes sure that I had a terrible night. And you did all that under the ruse of hiding the fact that you don't trust me. That's right. I don't. Do you want to know why that is? I'd like to hear, please. I pick up my phone and show Olivia the what's up pictures. They're fake photos. I wanted to get my revenge on you for setting me up. So you didn't cheat? No. I was faithful to you. Look. We're still done. I can't be with you. I'm not, Jess. Know that. So why is it so hard to trust me? It's hard because there's still a chance you could turn out to be like Jess. I'm up front with you. You know all my secrets. I never lie. You know that. So what more do you want from me? Nothing! I just want you to be Jess! What? No, I didn't mean that. I think you did. I didn't. Let me just... The reason why you don't trust me is that you see me as Jess. There's a side of Jess you loved, and there's a wrong version of her you hated. I don't think about her. I promise. So we put both sides of Jess together with me and... And what? And you can't work out who's who? The line is blurry. You see me like your ex. That's a wrong conclusion. I wouldn't compare you two. It wouldn't be fair. Fair or not, the result is you can't trust me. And if there's no trust... Don't say it. Please. There's no us. We can't be together. So this relationship is on course to end up like Hiroshima. It's doomed to fail. I'm quiet. Olivia walks up to me. She grabs my face. She kisses me on the cheek. I'll always like you. I'll always root for you. I'll always think of you. This doesn't have to be the tracks we travel down. You have the power to change it. So please, spend some time searching for your true feelings. And if your true feelings are connected to me, and not Jess, we can restart this again. Goodbye, Harrison. I wish for you to find your way back to me again. All the best. Olivia kisses me one final time. Then she grabs her handbag and exits, looking teary. After a beat, 
pick up my glass of wine and throw it against the wall. More to come of That Woman. Follow the Love Podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And if you love the podcast, please share it with family and friends. Thank you for listening.